Your name back. They're on the table back there. Ask them on the table, and you can get that. I think we know each other by now, but if you don't, still to come, you can grab this as well. Your name back should be on the table. But again, we're, we're glad to have you here today. We're going to get started. Um, Glenn and Reggie are here again, and looking forward to some great discussion. And, and, we, and we know that great things are happening in your community, so we've heard about it. And we're looking forward to God doing um, amazing things more than what he's already doing. You know, he said, oh, taste and see that the Lord, he is good. Amen. So we just thank God for that. So I'm going to pray, and then I'm going to turn over to these wonderful gentlemen here, and they lead us through these sessions. All right? Let's pray, shall we? Our Heavenly Father, we, we thank you once again for this beautiful day you've given us, a day that wasn't promised to us, but because of your love, your grace, and your mercy, you spared us once again to be able to put one leg out of the bed and onto the floor, and the other one to follow. Oh, so Father God, we thank you for that, and we thank you for giving us breath in our lungs, being able to come here today and just to, to learn, to grow as we look at how to enhance our communities, what works best for our community, and what works best as we work together to collaborate and to lift up our communities. And Father God, I just thank you for Glenn and Reggie today, as they're going to lead us. Father God, I just ask that you be with them, guide them, give them the words to say to us, Father, as, as our ears and our eyes are open to what you have for us. And we thank you for everyone that is here, that they press their way out of here safely. And we just thank you, Father God, for all that you are. We just pray that, that you continue to help us to grow because every day that you give us is a growing experience. And we need to have that attitude in our hearts each and every day. So we thank you once again. But we give you all the praise, glory, and honor. For in your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, gentlemen. If we could just get Major, a little more excited about being here. <laughs> I think that would help us all. His low energy just drives us. Uh, you know, uh, if, do we have newbies that were not here? At, uh, I, well, you know, sometimes I just, I thought you were new, but I didn't want to insinuate that. So we're here, uh, and we're, we're glad to have you. Uh, we generally, ask new people to share a few things like their social security number <laughs> and uh, pin number to their bank and stuff like that. Just a few things like that. <laughs> but maybe we won't do that this time. Oh, thank we you. Can. <laughs> it's like, and, um, uh, so we've got two great teams here. I do want to, uh, and we are going to get a, a word from you about what's been going on since we were here last time. But I, I do want to just position a little bit of uh, what we're doing with, with some kind of uh, maybe a background theological uh, or biblical piece that, that because what you're doing is so important. I think about often about what people's view of, of God is. I have a lot of conversations, as you can imagine, traveling. Uh, with, with people in hotels or airplanes. I try not to in airplanes because there's nowhere to go. I can't <laughs> run. Uh, you know, so I usually don't engage people there as much. Um, just want to put on the uh, parachutes. But, um, but I think it's funny to me how different people, how people think about God. Like, and, and, and a typical thing is like God is old. You know, um, and I understand why. He's been around for a while, but um, you know, Sistine Chapel renderings, I guess, uh, long beards, all that kind of stuff. But it would be just as correct um, biblically to put, you know, show God as a strapping youth, you know, I mean, in, in prime time, kind of like where I am. <coughs> and, um, and, and so, uh, you know, at least I didn't tear my leg from trying to act you know, I don't want to talk about that anymore. But, um, but I think, uh, you know, if, if our idea of God is that he's old, then that kind of impacts our prayer life. And, you know, we, 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 we tend to think God's struggling to keep up. And so we come to our prayer time and we tell him what's going on, just in case he hadn't been paying attention or it may have slipped his mind. And, uh, then we outline a few suggestions for him on how he could move forward on this which I'm sure he appreciates our consultative help on, on his job because he's, he's still new at this God thing. And, um, and then we, we ask him something like, well, please hurry up. 
you know, uh, in, in Jesus' name, amen. Would you please hurry up and get here? Yeah, and so I think it, that's how images can so impact our, uh, our conversations and our, 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 even our disposition on what we think God is capable and up to. When the truth of the matter, I, I think um, the book on God is that he's always up to something new. He, he, you know, uh, you've got really to the folks there in, in exile in ancient Israel when they're kept, I mean, you know, obviously the world's captivated right now with the Russia and Ukraine invasion and, and uh, horrific. But in the ancient world, I mean, th this is how empires changed. This is so the Babylonians come and they carry off the leaders from Israel and uh, uh, all of the, a lot of families and and they actually, you know, are there for decades. And in the middle of that, um, there begins to be a little generational tension because there are folks in exile in Babylon who can remember the good old days, how it used to be. And then there are new kids growing up in this strange new world that have never known that world. So they listen to the old timers talk about, uh, you know, and so there's, you know, a little bit of tension and all that. And in the middle of, of that, uh, the prophet speaking for God says, hey, forget the former things. Don't dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Don't you get it? Well, don't you perceive it? Which we would clearly like, don't you get it? I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. Those two verses out of Isaiah uh, 43, 18, 19, if you want to look it up to check it out later. I mean, we quote those a lot. We love to excerpt that phrase, see, I'm doing a new thing. But I really think it's more than, than just that episode. I think creation was new. Uh, the creation of human beings was uh, uh, creatures that uh, actually, that God has decided that we share his image. Uh, as of now, we're the only creatures in the universe that we know about. Uh, and we did launch a new telescope. The web is pushing stuff further and further back. You know, we may discover some neighbors, but that will be my first question. Uh, is your, what is your view of God? You know, because that will teach me a lot of, if, I, if I'm on the panel of interview that means. But at any rate, so far, it's just us. And we're alone in the universe in terms of certainly the apex of our creation of creatures bearing the image of God. I mean, that's brand new. Um, Eve was brand new to Adam. I mean, you think about it. I mean, Adam, is, when he woke up, there was Eve. I mean, he'd seen everything else. That was a way to go God moment, don't you think? You know, good, good work. Uh, you know, and, uh, and, and, and on and on. I mean, you know, God will even do repeat things. Uh, in the scriptures in, in new ways. I mean, like, you know, when he when he rescues uh, the Israelites out of Egypt, um, back to the promised land, uh, you know, um, I'm just so excited to have new markers, freshly, freshly painted. Uh, so, so I, I know, I mean, it's, it, it, you know, so, so you know, let's just say, I mean, this is a very, just, so here's the Mediterranean Sea, here's Egypt, here's uh, the Promised Land, you know, roughly. So, so when they leave Egypt, of course, they, they, they go on a direct line to, to the Promised Land. Oh, where's the first place they go? Huh? The uh, desert. Back to, back, I'm sorry, I can't hear sometimes. The I said the desert. The, yeah, and, and what's actually, you're, I know I'm supposed to affirm every answer is the right one. That's very close. Um, um, but um, they actually, the first place they wind up is at the Red Sea. Oh, yeah. And which, which is not, it, it's a Red Sea, so it, it's a detour. Mm -hmm. It ain't on the way to nothing. And, um, you know, of course, a lot of jokes have been made about Moses not you know, stop and ask for directions and all that kind of stuff, typical man, so here they were. But they wind up in this dead end with Pharaoh crashing down on them. You know, they can just feel the 
you know, the ground shaking with, and, and all these folks that have just been led out of Egypt, you know, and they're all, you know, thanks a lot, Moses, for bringing us out here. Appreciate it. Now we're going to die here. I mean, you know, all that stuff that if you've been in leadership very long, you've had folks say, boy, to go. Appreciate it. You got us in a mess. And Moses, of course, then just trying to get everybody to calm and say, just hang, hang loose and let's just see what God's going to do. And I think probably underneath his breath, he's saying, right about now would be a good time to do it. Uh, you know, uh, because he doesn't have exactly a plan B or C here. We, he doesn't even have a plan A. Uh, but, you know, obviously, God had something to show. He wanted to show up and show off at this Red Sea experience. And oftentimes when God starts something new in our lives, it feels like a detour. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, I'm not supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be over here. I didn't mean to offend you. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, people, <laughs> though, since you're new Felicia, you can just get up and walk around and stuff like that. <laughs> that you can come up here, take the marker away, take the floor. I mean, that's just the way uh, we operate. It's really the way okay. So, uh, you know, sometimes we get in trouble saying, you know, Lord, Lord, I did everything you told me to do, so why am I at this Red Sea and I'm in trouble? And I think, um, you know, that that sense of uneasiness sometimes causes us to leave the sea too soon before we see what God is really trying to do. And, um, and so, uh, and, and as a matter of fact, uh, a generation later, when Joshua takes the folks finally into the promised land after their wilderness experience, wandering around forever, you know, Sinai's over here somewhere, I don't know. So they feel when they find they God tells Joshua, you're, uh, you're going to go in with a dry ground experience. It's interesting that the wilderness is bracketed by two dry ground episodes, but the second one is so different. <clears throat> Since I'm in leadership development, and I, if I'd gotten that word, if I'd been Joshua, I would have organized dry ground crossing seminars. Uh, you know, uh, here's how I would show the movie on the first dry ground because here's how it's going to work. We're going to get there. Water's going to stack up on both sides. Big fish, all that stuff. And of course, I would and, and I would have volunteered to be in front, of course, so I could see all of this. <laughs> and of course, the first thing I would have done is gotten wet. <laughs> uh, because uh, when they topped the hill there and they head down, I mean, uh, it's, it's flood season. And uh, God doesn't dam the water up on both sides. This time he dams the, the river up, what, 17 miles upstream, whatever. So my hunch is, in fact, and that doesn't even start till the priests put their foot in the water, he says. My suspicion is they were probably in it up to their neck. You know, standing out there, and they look like prunes by the time this thing probably let out a cheer when the water level finally began to subside. And as they stood there, and the water dried up, and then, then folks went down. Now, why would God do that differently than the first dry ground deal, you know? I mean, why not just do a dry ground crossing the way a dry ground crossing should be done, you know? But so often in our lives, isn't it, even repeat stuff. God, you know, because I just think God has a great sense of humor, first of all. I'm counting on that. But I also think every generation needs its own dry ground crossing. We need, you know, faith is not something we store up like batteries. Mm -hmm. We need new opportunities to exercise our faith muscles. Because without faith, of course, the scripture says it's hard to please God. Actually, that's not what the scripture says. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So, he does us a favor by dealing us into situations where we constantly are having to respond to them. And of course, Jesus is brand new. No one is really expected. I mean, who would expect the bread of life to show up, you know, screaming for milk or, or you know, um, having to crawl through a birth canal, the creator of the universe. Um, I mean, what an, and the Holy Spirit coming, Pentecost is in honor. Then you get to the book of the Revelation, and John is seen through all the way through to the throne room, and he hears God say, I'm making everything as new, as renovated as possible with what I got to work with here. You know, I'm making everything what? Yeah. New. 
new is the book on God from Genesis to Revelation. And in our time. I don't know what God is up to, but if I always, but I would tell people if I were looking for God, I would look at the new stuff. Where's the new opportunity? Where's the new challenge? What's the new relationship about? What's that new insight? Because I think that's where he loves to hover around. Now, by the way, those people in exile, when they heard that, they knew exactly what God was referencing. He was fixing the cup loose and let them go back home. And so they're thinking about between Baghdad, where they are in Jerusalem, there ain't nothing but a bunch of desert and sand. We'll never make that trip. The camels can't be a will be able, how in the world be able. So that's when God says, look, it's not your job to figure out how this gets done. I'm paving an interstate and I'm putting cokes at every rest stop. I'm making a way in the desert and streams in the way. Your job is to say yes and start the trip. I'll take care of the heavy lifting. <laughs> so as you are rehearsing in these hours with us today and tomorrow about what God is up to in your community, I, I hope you all be paying attention to that new idea, maybe that new approach, that new challenge, and see what God, how, how does he want to show up, maybe and show off, and our job is just to say yes. It's no genius, by the way, to figure out why God can't do stuff, why stuff can't happen. I don't know why profoundly negative people think they're smarter than everybody else in the room. Uh, you know, because the folks that can figure out why it can't work are a dime a dozen. <laughs> that takes no special gifting, no real intellect. The gifted folks are the folks that can say, yes, now let's partner with God with what he's up to here and see how he does it.